So, I want to introduce you to our wonderful Wednesday group. Say hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> These are the ladies that make it happen every week. As we collect a bunch of knitted knockers, they come in unstuffed and they come in pretty raw sometimes. And so we sort through them, we stuff them, we uh, get them ready to mail and get them out the door. So I'm going to walk through each one of those processes today so we can see what these highly trained professionals are doing. <laughs> so the way this process starts is every week, Andrew from Apple Yarns delivers the mail to us and look what we've got. We've got a couple of wonderful packages. So let's go find out what's in it. So we take it over to our opening department, also known as Char. And what Char is going to do now is she's going to open the package and hopefully in there is some contact information from the person who sent it so that we can send them a thank you note letting them know that we got them and appreciate them because we can use all we can get. This week alone we are sending out 169 knockers all over the country and some even internationally. That can only happen because of these volunteer knitters. So Char, it's kind of fun when you're opening these and there's a card inside. Right, yes. And we really enjoy sharing with the group um, what people write, uh, either as recipients and thank yous, which we get tons of thank yous from people who have used them, but also um, people that are knitting them. And this just came in today. I love that. Your karma is rocking. <laughs> <laughs> and this person wrote, I crochet to honor my friend Stacy, who died of triple negative breast cancer the end of December 2013. Thank you for providing this service to our sisters in need. It is my privilege to be able to help you with best regards. Dear Char, I am loving my new knockers. They look and feel so natural. I have been telling my friends and already have some fellow survivors who are interested. Thank you so much for this confidence builder. I feel like a new woman or at least more like the old one. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Char. From New York. Thank you for what you do. From New Mexico, wow, if this works, it would be the blessing I've been looking for for four years. Thanks. From Oregon, thank you so much. This is amazing. From Florida, thank you for extending this wonderful service to breast cancer survivors. So know that you are making a difference, a real difference, um, to real women all over this country and all over the world. Yeah. That's what keeps us coming back. Wonderful. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yes. That is priceless. I mean, when we not only embrace the project ourselves, but share it with others, it just expands exponentially. So, Char, what do we have in here? These are all beautifully knit. They're the correct yarn and the correct pattern. And so I will write down the information and give it to Lorene so she could send a thank you note. So Lorene, let's see what that thank you note looks like. So this is what it looks like. And um, this is to Melinda and we've just sent her a thank you note that says thank you for sending them. They're beautiful and will be put right to use. I can't thank you enough. Thank you Lorene for writing those. Now, if they do not include their mailing address, sometimes some of that comes in without a mailing address, but we get an email address. If we get the email address, then we turn it over to Candace over here. And Candace will send out the acknowledgments of having received the knitted knockers for those people that have given us their email address. And we appreciate that very much. And these little forms are used also by Apple Yarns when people drop off their knitted knockers here. Um, we ask them to fill this out so that we can thank them and let them know um, that we've received them and appreciate them. So Char, oh, you've been is. opening these. How yes. are we doing? These are all very nicely done. Yarn. But we have a string coming out. So what are we going to do? I'm going to pass it over to Sue and she's going <laughs> to I will sorry. take care of that. <laughs> we have our special nipple fixer department and she is an expert. And we've got our our whole department here that are fixing <laughs> knockers that are are We're definitely usable, but they may have just a little issue. And so they make them ready to go. And so uh uh, once again, these are highly trained professionals. <laughs> yes. I want to point out that you don't need 
need to be a knitter or a crocheter. That's right. To make a difference, to help, because we need all these skills. If you can thread a needle and you can unravel stuff and put it back together, we can use you and you can be used in your community as well. So we've got a whole team here um, fixing these nipples, getting them ready to go. Now, sometimes we have a variation on the pattern. We have our patterns online. They've been downloaded 59,000 times, which is really cool, but there are other patterns out there. This one's okay. It's just a little different than we're used to, um, but it's totally usable, and so we're appreciative of those too. What about yarn choices? One of the most important things uh, that we look for in a great knitted knocker is the yarn because these are going to be worn against a woman's sensitive skin and they're going to be worn for a long time. So we love Pima cotton because it's a long strand yarn. It holds up well uh, with many washings and it stays soft. With that said, there's a variety of yarns that work well for knitted knockers. What we look for is that it's soft that it's non-wool, that it is washable, and that it's pretty. And it needs to hold up after washing and stay soft. Some cottons that are out there are designed for washcloths and such, and so they get stiff after they're washed. So we look for a mercerized cotton as well. And another thing we look at is the weight of the yarn. The weight needs to be either a baby weight, a DK weight, a sport weight or what they call a three weight. The more typical worsted weight or four weight tends to be too heavy. And consequently what happens is you end up with a heavier knocker that is not as flexible uh, in the bra. So it's not our preference. We really do prefer the lighter weight yarn that makes a very nicely contoured knitted knocker. We do accept acrylic for swimming. Interestingly enough, people do request knitted knockers for their swimsuits and the acrylic will dry a little faster and the stuffing in there tends to hold up pretty well even when it gets wet. So um, we'll use the acrylic for that, but our preference definitely is the cotton. Now I'm not sure what this yarn is. It's not our typical cotton, uh, Pima cotton, but they are beautifully made and it is the correct weight. You can see that it's a fine weight yarn. I'm guessing that this might be a baby weight. Now, while we can't send this out to somebody that requests a knitted knocker that uh, indicates that they have any allergies because we don't know what the content is, these are beautifully made, they're soft, they meet our criteria. So this would be an example of a, a suitable alternative to the Ultra Pima cotton yarn. So those are our preferences. The weight of the yarn is critical, especially on crocheted. These are a little bit heavy. Okay, so the these are the crocheted knockers, and we love our crocheters. We have some here. And uh, the, the issue with crocheting is that just by its nature, it can be a little bit stiffer. So uh, it's very important that you use a fine yarn, uh, and I mean not just quality fine, but a fine weight of yarn. And we love our Ultra Pima fine yarn. Um, Pima cotton has a long strand to it, so it's strong, and it, it, yet it retains its softness and sheen. These are made out of a yarn that is a bit too heavy, so when it's stuffed, it doesn't have the flexibility that we need and the softness in, in the bra. So unfortunately, as much as we'd like to be able to use these, um, we probably are not going to be able to. And so we are going to send them a lovely note thanking them for them and, and just suggest that they use uh, a finer weight of yarn. So we're using this to always positively reinforce. These are beautifully made and I just hate for any effort to be wasted. So we are going to encourage them just to change up the yarn and keep sending them because we can use them. And we have two tone ones. Yeah, this is a great opportunity to talk about what to do if you get bored making the beige ones. <laughs> Most women request the beige. About 80% of our requests are for these beige ones. However, if you get bored making the plain solid color ones, you can change up the color a few rows into the back and it won't even show when they put it in their bra, but you can have a little more fun making these rather than just getting bored with making all the same color. Now, when Char is done sorting these, they get sent over to our 
stuffing team. <laughs> and also when this team is done making their uh, fixes, they come over to our specially trained stuffers. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so our highly trained stuffers now. You would think there's nothing to it, right? That you just stuff all of the stuffing in there you can get. But you know what? There is a technique to this. One of the things that we've noticed is sometimes we will get knockers in that have been cinched up. Here's a perfect example. Look at these beautifully knit, knitted knockers. Right yarn, beautifully made. It's been cinched up. What's the problem? We wouldn't think there's a problem with that, but trust me, just try to open that up to stuff it. Oh my gosh. I, I think bad words, not you guys, I'm sure. But <laughs> finally, okay, this one wasn't too bad. Some of them are a little tough, aren't they? Okay, so you get that opened up and then um, Barbara over here is a perfect example of stuffing. Why don't you turn that over and show how you were stuffing those in. Okay, now, we take this opportunity to overstuff the knockers. If you don't put enough stuffing in there, it's going to collapse when it goes into a bra. You need to have more than enough stuffing, and some women have a concave chest, so they need more volume. Some need less, but we don't want anybody to have to go out and buy more stuffing. So here's an example of our stuffing. We go through a ton of this stuff, and it's a major expense for us. But you know it's worth it because our knitters, we want them to be able to do what they do well and that's knit these knockers. And so they mail them to us unstuffed. We get them stuffed, we send them out. But anyway, we buy this in bulk and we go through a lot of it. We, this box will probably last us, what, two, three weeks? But when we're sending out 150 or so a week, it takes a lot of stuffing. So a perfectly stuffed knocker is just just if like that. There you go. Yes. We have some with nipples and some without. One of the issues is, is it's difficult to make the nipples small enough. Mm -hmm. And that's what this team over here, back here that we had just looked at, our fix-it team, um, also <coughs> thinks bad words sometimes when they have to undo, I'm getting a nod back here, you haven't <laughs> seen it, but um, when they have to undo a nicely finished off one but the nipples are too big, it's really a challenge to uh, get those redone. So we have started encouraging people to make them without nipples. So these are fine, these are beautifully made nipples. Yeah. And this is one made without a nipple. And the way that's done is you just omit the eye cord. And most women really don't want the <coughs> nipple anyway. So now this, this is a knocker um, that has been turned over to our, our nipple fix it team. <laughs> and this is the eye cord without finishing it. If you want to put nipples on your knockers and you are not comfortable stitching them down, we'd much rather receive them like this <coughs> than already stitched down and too big. Mm -hmm. So sure. it's very easy for them because they know exactly how to do it, to stretch this out and stitch this down and make a nice tight little nipple. So uh, feel free to send them to us like this or make them without nipples. Or if you're really good at it, Go ahead and stitch those nipples down. Okay, so this team, after they're done stuffing, the temptation is to cinch them up tight and get them ready to go. Well, there's a problem with that. Here's a perfect example. Okay, when you get this, you open up your package, you're excited, you have your knitted knockers. Well, you haven't made them. You don't know how to open this up. You're not a knitter or a crocheter. And so you're like, oh my gosh, this is too much stuffing. What do I do? So we try to make it intuitive for them. We leave this opening open about that much. So they can just go in there and pull out the <laughs> stuffing they need. And they don't have to even really think about it. And then they, we leave a long tail. There's a reason we've asked you to leave a tail of about six inches. So it doesn't unravel. And then you just, they can just cinch it up like that and leave a little gap and then tuck, tuck this thread in there. We don't do that for them because we want them to know that, that they can adjust them. Okay, so I am so excited to show you our sizing board. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, bless her heart, created this. These are our bra cups in all the different sizes. So our stuffers, after they stuff them, they will size them 
and they'll go, oh, this is a B. I don't know. Is that a B or a C? B plus. B plus. B plus. B plus. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, and then they will tie them together so that the pairs do not get separated. But I want to point out, if you tie them too loosely together, what happens? Okay. This is loosely tied together. I'm going to show you what we get. <laughs> when it goes in the bins, we get a rat's nest, and then we're thinking bad words again. So um, <laughs> there you go, guys. The fixers get to untangle those. Okay. So what we do is actually we're going to cut off some of the length of this thread because this is just too long. We don't this need that long. This is going to be opened up just a yes. little bit. There you go. See, our stuffers know that. I told you they're highly trained professionals. Okay. So we're going to cut that string to be about that long, enough so it won't unravel. And then we're going to tie this together, not cinching it up, but close enough where it won't get tangled. Okay. Now we've already sized this, right? We've decided what size it is. So these are ready to go. They're overstuffed and ready to go. So let's go to our next station. And these are our order fillers. Airmail. Airmail. Coming, <laughs> incoming. We have fun, I'm telling you. We have way more fun than we should be allowed to have on Wednesdays. So we've got a sizing song for our wonderful <laughs> sizing board. Lynn. Here we go. A cup, B cup, C cup, D. Knitted knockers go to G. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and beyond, and actually. Beyond, yeah. Yeah. Actually on special orders. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, the next part of this process is filling the orders, but it really starts before we meet on Wednesdays. Mara is our wonderful order filler. When an order comes in, online on knittedknockers.org, there is a form that is filled out. Automatically, a response is sent out to them saying, we've received your order and you can expect to receive these within two weeks. If not, let us know because something has happened in the process. So when an order first comes in, I review it to make sure that it has all the information we need to complete the order, that there's not an issue with their address, that they've um, been sure to designate a size and review their comments in case they need something special like 100% um, cotton or they um, need a question answered about size. And then I check and see where is this order coming from. We currently forward orders on to 18 states and um, as well as Canada to fill their own local orders. So some of these you can see I've already forwarded on. I've already forwarded on a couple today and I have another couple sitting here. And then the ones that will be forwarded locally here uh, weekly, I've got 10 to do for next week. So after I check the order, I then take this order and I will put it on my spreadsheet that I created. Since we have up to 60 orders a week, um, I found this is kind of the easiest way to keep track of them versus printing each order on a separate piece of paper. And I just break them out into size. So the ladies here have an easier time of filling them when they meet. So we just designate their name and um, a singular pair and their color preference and also any special requests. So when it's time to print the orders for the week to fill, I go ahead and print each size on its own sheet so these ladies who are here can work off their own sheet. They have their own bins of um, knockers. It matches up with their sheet. And then they also have um, labels that I've printed when I create the order to mail out that matches up. So Mara has done amazing things. And on this spreadsheet, she takes all of those orders and she sorts them by size. The other thing that Mara does is she creates mailing labels and prints those off. And so on Wednesdays, those are sent. Mara sends those to us. And then our order fillers take over and fill those orders from those pre-printed mailing labels. And so each one of our order fillers gets a size to fill and they can work out of those bins and fill them. So we look at the sheet here, we find their label, and we take it off and put it on the bag. We stuff a, an insert in here explaining uh, how to adjust the size and uh, how to uh, take care of it, wash it and so forth. We put that inside the bag, and then we um, fill the order. This is for a pair of C's neutral color. And so I've 
uh, taken the back and opened it up and uh, cut this string off and tucked it in. And here's her pair of neutral C's. And we just seal it up and pop it in the mail. And look at that mail bag. And we're only about half done. So I just want to add to this, when Lorene mentioned that she opened up this back, this is our final step for quality control. This is where the buck stops here. If these are not good enough to go out at this point, it's their responsibility to make sure that it's going to be um, suitable for these women. They need to have really good quality, high quality yarn. This is going to be worn against sensitive skin. We want it to be durable. We want it to be usable, be washable. So the buck stops here. The other thing is if we can't fill all the orders, like this week we have a few D's we can't fill, um, we'll save those for next week, but, but we need some D's. So uh, some of us will go home and knit them, or we'll wait till next week and hope that we get some in the mail. So keep those knockers coming. So Lorene, tell me, what do you find consistently that you run short on? Is there a particular thing, like this week you say D's, is that pretty typical? It is. Um, uh, the D's, uh, this week we have D, uh, quite a few D's that we can't fill. And triple D's, double D's, those are in high demand. So that's why we say it can take two weeks to send out knitted knockers. We meet every week and we try to fill our orders weekly. But if your order comes in on a Thursday, it can be almost a week before we're filling orders. And if we don't have your particular size, it can take a little more time. But here's the other challenge. Some people say, I want the neutral color, or I want a bright green one. And so, like Anne was just pointing out here, that when she was filling this, this looked like some double Ds in a neutral color. Um, you may not always have the double Ds in the neutral color, and um, so it may take a little longer to get those first choices, but we do everything we can to get women what they want. Now, the challenge with this one is, if somebody requested a dark one, is this dark or bright? In my opinion, it's bright because this is the part that's going to show out the top of the bra. So I would suggest when you make a knitted knocker and you change up your color, have fun with it, change it up, but change it up a little bit on the back rather than on the top. Then we can send this out as a dark one because none of that bright orange is going to show. But by far, 80% of our requests are for these colors. And think about it, if you can only have one pair, you're probably going to want to go the conservative route. If you can have two or three, you might want a color for each outfit. But unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of sending out um, ones to, to match every outfit that you've got. But anyway, these are our most requested. Now, we really try to equip medical clinics and yarn shops everywhere in order to provide them with the materials they need to get the knitted knockers in the hands of the women that can use them. We will send them brochures that explain about knitted knockers. We have folders that are designed for knitters that have the pattern inside, kind of have our story on the back, and, and they're just nice folders. And we have business cards that show knittedknockers.org, and they can add their information on the back of the card. And so we send those out as well on Wednesdays. But in addition, we have the orders that need special attention that we couldn't pre-post. They're going to foreign countries, or we don't know the postage because um, they're print materials. And so Lisa here is our post office person, and we send a wonderful big check each week with her to the post office and she waits in that long line bless her heart and <laughs> and and buys the postage and takes care of that and so we appreciate that job very much and they know you well now don't they Lisa oh, and I always have a sample with me so that they they know what knitted knockers are oh <laughs> <laughs> and they don't give me a hard time <laughs> yes <laughs> So, to illustrate the difference between traditional breast prosthetics and knitted knockers, I'm going to drop these bags and you guess which one has the knitted knockers in it. <laughs> and guess what? This has four in it and these have two. So here's what a traditional um, size C breast prosthesis are, as I pointed out, and then 
Here's a pair of size C's knitted knockers. Okay, so after packaging everything up, we have to get it to the post office. And so we've got a big bag here. We drag this out for the mailman to haul to the post office. So we've just seen how the process is done here in Bellingham, Washington, filling orders for all over the country. But it didn't start this way. It started simple in my laundry room for a couple of years before it grew to the point where um, we needed a team. We needed a village to make this happen. So we're very grateful for that. But I want to encourage you that it doesn't take a team of 16 to 20 people meeting every week to make it happen. You can start small. Most groups out there will not be filling 100 or 150 knitted knockers every single week. And we realize that. So one or two people really can do all these processes and it may stay small but know that every little bit that you're doing is making a difference in your community and it's really appreciated so from all of us to all of you thanks for making knitted knockers don't throw that one it's not a knitted knocker <laughs>